What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Trail Talk. Today, we're covering what riding gear you need. Once again, welcome back. Like I said, uh, this is another episode of Trail Talk. My name is Evan. We have Eric behind the camera, of course. And if you check it out, we're in a brand new location. Um, careful, Eric. I don't know where we can all look. But <laughs> uh, we're obviously indoors today. This is a, we're in a shop. This is kind of like a garage. Um, so guess what? If we're indoors, this is going to be called a, a shop talk episode. If we're outdoors, trail talk indoors shop talk. It's all good. Um, this is kind of like a fake garage. There's actually like, so there's tools in every drawer, so it is also a real garage. People do wrench here. If you look on the ground, Eric, proof. There's dirt. Uh, there's dirt, right? So it's kind of a fake real garage, but it's cool. And today, like I said, we're covering what gear you need to ride and go off-roading in. The biggest thing here is, I mean, we've talked about it many times, right? I've held this helmet, I've showed you cool things. We've said like, hey, you need long, long pants, because I don't know what pants are apparently. <laughs> but what we're gonna do today is go way more in depth, a lot more pro tips, considerations like, hey, my visor, what do I do with it, right? Or where does the goggle strap go? Not up there, right? Down, whatever. Um, but I guarantee, Eric, even you, yes you're going to learn something today that you did not know. Okay. And we'll see, I, I guarantee. Um, okay, so the first thing I just wanna share, this is obviously a gear video, right? Um, I, will, I will confess, I am myself a, a little bit of a guy who's addicted to gear. Um, so my first tip is don't just buy all this gear that we show you, right? Let your riding and where you live and the terrain, whatever, let that dictate what you need for gear. Don't go get every single thing here. If you're not gonna use it, don't get it. Ultimately, you could go in jeans, you could have a sweatshirt on, you know, you can use exactly what you already have. But we are gonna share some really cool pieces of gear with you and possibly give some pro tips as well. Okay, so we're getting into it. Um, we've talked many times about this. Just a reminder, right? You need to have a helmet when you're riding. You need to have goggles. You need to have eye protection, right? Uh, <laughs> you saw in episode one, I literally forgot how to say the word pants. It's all good. Um, you gotta have pants, you gotta have closed-toed boots on, uh, long sleeves to protect your arms. You gotta have gloves. Those are the basics, right? But we're gonna get way more in depth. Helmets first. So there's a ton of great options for helmets. There's a ton of companies that make helmets. Um, we ourselves at Polaris, we have the Tenacity ones. Uh, we have 509 helmets. We have these uh, Climb helmets, right? Super cool guy. Um, kind of like good, better, best. The, the main thing you want with a helmet is a rated helmet. So DOT approved, guess what? Protecting your head is really cool. <laughs> if you crash and you hit your head, that's not good. I cringe when I see videos online of people just flying with goggles on or sunglasses. I cannot stress enough, please protect your head. Protect your family's heads. Think about you know, the people you love, okay? Come on. Um, Eric, do your, does your family wear helmets? Yes. Okay, okay. yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so my favorite helmet, and I'll tell you some features that I like. Firstly, this is the, here, maybe I'll go like this. It has your name on it still. So <laughs> yeah. so you know this is the infamous, yeah. no one needed, don't worry about oh. that. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is the Climb F5. There is one reason why I like this helmet, Eric. What is it? <laughs> this looks like the helmet from Master Chief on Halo. Oh, God. I don't know if you can see it, but like the little thing that sticks out, these doodads, it just, the editor might put a picture of a Halo helmet on here. It looks like a helmet from Halo. Why I actually like this helmet is, you can see, can you see the carbon fiber? Yes. So if you get a carbon fiber helmet, it's really cool because it is just, it's so light. And on your head all day long, bouncing around, you know, on your neck, um, not a lot of people these days work their neck out. Uh, it's way lighter, it's really nice, just comfort all day long. Um, the airflow on this helmet, really awesome. And again, you don't, you don't have to go get this helmet. Get ones with these features. This is just our recommendations. Having airflow is really awesome because you can get hot inside. Um, 
Guess what? When you get hot inside, you get a little head stank. Nasty. Technical term. Uh, this liner, and I recommend for any helmet, get a removable liner. So if you see like, it just snaps out. Super easy, snaps back in. Very simple. Um, throw, pull this out, throw it in the washer. You wanna have a removable helmet liner. Have I ever washed this liner? Listen, <laughs> water's expensive. <laughs> uh, anyway, next up here, <clears throat> another awesome feature to have, which honestly I don't know many companies that have this besides us. You probably know of one in, in the comments, if so, go ahead and mention it. The magnetic closure literally is so awesome. So other than this, <clears throat> which you probably remember from the, the old days dirt biking, Eric, the double D-ring setup, to do that with gloves sucks. To do it with just when you're tired, it just gets hard to do over time. But the magnet just getting it remotely close, right? I can almost throw it shut. Super awesome. Um, okay, a question we always get, <clears throat> how to look cool wearing your helmet? Come on down here, I know you're. Now you want to look at me. <laughs> uh, where do you put your visor, right? See it moving? Some helmets move a lot. Like you could go, you could almost literally cover your eyes. You could be way up here if you have some crazy moto helmets. Um, the, what people think is like, okay, if you put your helmet visor down, oh, it looks geeky. But guess what? It's actually really functional. Having the wind not picking up on your helmet when you're riding is super nice. So. But at the same time, having your helmet visor up, you know, people like to think that's a little bit cool. Whatever, your style is your preference, doesn't matter. What I recommend though is to have your visor just loose enough that I can move it, but it's also tight enough tension that it doesn't just move on its own. So if I'm riding and it's getting, you know, a little bit faster, 60 miles an hour, whatever, um, I pull my visor down real quick because then it pulls the wind out of my face. And if I get done with a ride and I want more vision, boom, pull it back up. There you go. Also, it helps with the sun. It also helps with the sun, yes. So you might be going into the sun too, pull the visor down. Sometimes it helps to have it up, whatever the conditions dictate. But it gives you the option to do whatever you want. Are we tracking, Eric? I got you. Okay. <laughs> uh, next thing, winterizing your helmet. So this right now is set up for fun summer times, right? I said airflow, all that stuff. Um, some helmets, this one does, come with a liner, a Gore-Tex liner, at least on this helmet, uh, that you snap in above uh, all the padding and it literally seals off all the vents. So all these vents, it makes the helmet totally windproof, which in the winter is awesome. And then most helmets also come with a breath box. Is this, does this make any That's sense at all? Box. It's right, yeah. it would be a, like, it's like a neoprene type fabric and it comes in here. Sometimes it's even nice in the dust just to protect your, you know, all the dust flying in. But there you go, get a rated helmet. I like Halo, I guess, so this is my helmet anyway. Um, is this expensive? Yes, it is. I dipped into my, four, uh, my 401k a little bit to get this, just kidding. Um, but find a good helmet, make sure it's rated, get one that you need. Next thing, eye protection. Protect your eyes. But actually, seriously, seeing is awesome, especially when you need to see. And say dust flies up, little dust, right? That can get in your eyes. L let's say a bigger piece of gravel flies up. You wanna protect your eyes. And you wanna make sure that it's some kind of eye protection, likely a goggle, uh, rated, again, made for off-roading. There's some mountain bike goggles, there's some like, that don't need the same rating. There's a little bit chintzier stuff. Make sure you get a good, strong goggle or have strong eye protection. Um, one other kind of eye protection that's pretty common is if someone was to have a modular helmet. Uh, a lot of people wear those in the Southwest. If you have a clean air system, definitely a lot of people do. That actually has a visor or like a, what am I saying, Eric? A shield. A, an eye shield, yes. Yeah. There wouldn't be a visor, sometimes there is, but the whole front would just be simply covered. Um, I don't run those as much because goggles are just easier for me. These fog less on me, but I know if you run clean air and you have an eye shield, uh, it also prevents them from fogging. So, you know, there's always the fog consideration. Figure it out, you know, it'll be okay. Um, I run goggles, so some considerations on goggles. Let me just watch me professionally place these. 
Um, so here we go, goggles on the helmet. Uh, one thing with goggles is what lenses are we gonna run? So we're in here right now, I'm not sure if you can see Eric, but they are a very dark lens. They're almost a little bit reflective. I had these on in the first episodes. I actually don't prefer dark lenses unless it is so sunny. Um, I really like clear lenses because you get to perfectly see and you get to see terrain differences. Uh, it, I just prefer clear lenses. It's very preferential what lenses. So I do recommend whatever goggles, and they probably have this, will have interchangeable lenses. Um, now hang in there. These are different lenses than would go on these goggles, but I'm just gonna use these for, this is a demonstration, right? Yeah. Why, why, why do we have four lenses? It just <laughs> looks cooler. <laughs> <laughs> looks cool. Um, so different types of lenses. Firstly, well, those aren't the ones I wanted. Here, check this out. I saved this. Watch this. Nothing better. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, clear lenses. So these are awesome because it's just your actual vision and you're just seeing. So you're see, okay, a difference in the terrain, you can see shadows better. Um, I usually always run these. And over time, like, you, th you know, your helmet's in your bag, whatever, over time they're gonna get scratched up and eventually you'll need new lenses. They're not that expensive, it's pretty easy replacement. Um, dark lenses, once again, if it's uh, very, very sunny, maybe the direction you're going is straight into the sun, sometimes you can negate that with your visor and still clear lenses. Um, the one other type of lenses I recommend is if you had a yellow lens or a kind of a rose colored lens. In low light conditions, those can help you increase your visibility. You know, how does it work? Nobody knows, but it just helps you see better definition in the terrain in low light conditions. So that is a recommendation also, uh, lens consideration. And then, Another one where it's like nobody, there's no direction on this than from just riding for a long time. But where do you ride with the goggles? So here is, you know, I don't know if this is a pet peeve of mine, but I wish I could like tell these people, when you ride with your goggles down here, is this a low rider setup? <laughs> so A, Sometimes people say this isn't as cool. And does coolness matter? No. But I mean, hey, sometimes if you, if you look good, your riding gets a little better too. Um, there is a functional problem that I have with this setup though, which is it is putting pressure on the bottom of your helmet. And so when it's on your head, without me putting this on, it wants to pull the helmet up the entire time that you're riding a little bit. And if you add a wind pressure to that, now it's even more so. So I like to ride with my goggles up here, which normally there's like literally, some helmets have like a channel to actually show you. But when it's up here, it wants to hold the helmet and push it this way, so down. And in reference to where your face is, actually like play with it. Put your helmet on, put your goggles on, move it down. You'll feel it move the pressure of the helmet up a little bit. So that is a, my biggest tip for you is run it. Here, this is kind of, you didn't tell me my goggles were askew. <laughs> <laughs> I like to figure it out. Put it in a straight line, however you want to do it. Okay, next thing. Are you ready, Eric? Yeah. Follow me. Can you see my microphone? Okay, it's a little behind the scenes. Uh, welcome to the dump box. All right, we're talking long sleeve tops, shirts. I can't, I can't. I can't believe I said tops. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, long sleeve jerseys, shirts, jackets. We're talking coverage up on the top of your body. Um, why do you want that? Well, it's gonna protect you. So from the wind, from the sun, um, again, you know, what is the scenario where you're driving through like bushes? Don't do that, but sometimes there's foliage, right? Great word. Uh, and you do need long sleeves for protection. Now, in the summer, I know, you sweat more. Eric and I both sweat. Uh, nobody wants to wear long sleeves. But there are options, and I do recommend them, especially think about riding in the desert all day long, riding in humidity all day long. It's nice to have something that keeps you cool, actually, and keeps the sun off. So I recommend, and listen, you're going to see a dirty secret of mine. I have a lot of climb gear, right? We work for the company. 
you know, I'm gonna like the company that I work for. So just easy, you know, I have a lot of climb gear, it's okay. Uh, anyway, um, this is the climb Mojave, well that's very handy for me to know, uh, Mojave jersey. You don't have to get this jersey, but it's awesome. The main point here is get a very athletic fabric. So like, if you played any sports in high school, right, there's like those penny jerseys, Eric? Yeah. No one, like, they were always very, like, cropped. <laughs> uh, this is just, like, very similar to that. It's super light. You could probably see through it, potentially, if I hold, like, one of them up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very, very thin. Um, Climb actually calls it the AC for the outdoors, which I literally think is true. Um, it just directs air around you. It's really nice to wear all day. Like, you really don't get hot. No hotter than you would in, you know, a cotton t-shirt or something. So, wear long sleeves. <clears throat> Another option is cooling shirts. Now, how do those work? Literally, nobody knows, Eric. No, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> there, I've seen marketing on like ions and it, nobody knows, but cooling shirts actually do also like kind of cool you. It's probably something like this, but I, rec I do recommend those. I've worn them, I really liked them. They do keep you cool. Um, if you're on the lake ever, you probably know like when you throw your sun shirt on because you're just getting baked. Kind of the same thing. Wear long sleeves though in summer. Very good idea. Um, next consideration is as things get colder, uh, you kind of want to move to a layering system. And this is where there's a ton of options. So like there are things like, and remember, okay, it's another climb thing. Just hang in there with me, right? In, insert your favorite brand. Um, <clears throat> a rain jacket. This is just simply a shell. It's windproof, it's waterproof or resistant, you know, whatever the right terminology is. Um, this over a t-shirt, if you do keep this riding because it has long sleeves, great option. If you don't need a ton of insulation and you just need some wind or rain protection. Um, another great option, if it gets more, right? This is more of like a shell, uh, or not, sorry, not just a shell, like a soft shell with a little bit of like kind of fleece inside. You're getting into some of my old <laughs> this is a used jacket. Um, and it actually has held up really well. Um, this, you know, if you need a little bit more, this provides some more warmth, right? There's all these different options. There's, you know, this is like full blown, much more warmth and insulation on the inside, still a resistant shell. I do recommend having a wind and water resistant shell if you're going to be wearing like a more of a jacket item because you kind of don't expect it, but the wind of riding, if that makes sense, all the air rushing by, does make it colder in many cases than when you are you know, just standing around. Um, it actually has the opposite effect in summer if it's over, oh, do you know the degree, if it's over 110 degrees, Eric, if you're riding in that, it actually gets hotter because it's like almost a uh, hair dryer effect. I don't have a hair dryer, but I've been told. <clears throat> um, there's also like, so there are also some riding specific jackets that are like the actual most heavy duty thing. Again, this is Climb, they're super primo, if you know the brand, obviously. Um, insert your favorite brand here. But what's cool about this jacket, obviously it's Gore-Tex. Come on in closer, Eric. It is literally, like the weight of the fabric is, it's measured in denier, D, right? Like 600D, 800D. There's more density in the fabric for basically wear and tear. Again, trees brushing you, whatever. Um, this is a pretty light jacket as far as warmth, but it is like the, the absolute most crazy shell that you can get. Um, it actually can also come with, you probably can see, there's like padding in here, right? Boom. Yeah. This is the D3O stuff where if you, you hit it, it gets harder from an impact. I took it out on the right side because I don't like having the bulk if I don't need it. Um, you, this is, I mean, you could wear this for dirt biking or something too, which is why it's kind of in there. But, a lot of great options. Okay, uh, next up here, gloves. <clears throat> so, I know a lot of people don't like riding with gloves. Um, you really want to ride with gloves, and here's why. A, again, it protects your hands. If you get a strike, right, there's some, 
uh, some knuckle padding if you hit certain things. Um, honestly, if you have to get out and wrench on your vehicle, it's nice for that. If you have to pick something up, a rock, whatever, uh, who knows what it might be. You're gonna need them anyway if you use a toe strap or a winch, anyway. Um, what I recommend in the summer, um, and again, you know, insert your favorite brand, okay? <laughs> uh, get a very light glove. I want, I personally like having the lightest glove possible, A, on the top, so it's like, you can almost kind of see it's like lighter here, it's just so light, like meaning the color, because it's so thin. Um, and then on the hand, equally thin, so I can really feel the steering wheel. I personally like to have good wheel feel, um, or you'll say like, if you have like a, a racing friend, like they'll talk about feel. It is really nice to get good feel and feedback from the wheel. Um, so really light in the summer. If it's winter time, I don't have an example, but in the same way these jackets became more wind and waterproof and warm, um, equally, go get, you know, if you want, a windproof glove where just the top is windproof and the bottom isn't, or the whole thing's wind and waterproof. Honestly, like in episode two, I had literally just winter gloves on. Like, it's all good, right? As long as they have some kind of, you know, abrasion resistant texture on the palm, it's gonna be okay. They're really not gonna get shredded, just wear whatever's comfortable. If you have gloves, you probably don't need to go get more gloves. But if you do, go get a good pair of gloves and you will not regret it. Pants, uh, similar story to jackets, right? There's a summer all the way up to winter version of pants. Um, Eric and I were just laughing about this. Listen guys, in the summer, you're on your own. <laughs> Who makes a good summer pant? You know, of course, a bunch of the cool riding companies, they make really light stuff. Um, we were just thinking, have, if, you've ever, if you've ever seen like linen pants, could be low key a great option. I've, I've, I've never done it, get them on sale, they're always on sale, uh, no one buys them. But <clears throat> anyway, um, literally just get the lightest pant you possibly can. As you get going further into fall, winter, you know, Jeans, awesome option. I recommend having like some stretch in them just cause it's a little bit nicer if you're sitting on an ATV or you know, just sitting all day long. Like the flexibility is kind of nice if you're then like you know, almost hiking around, like hiking pants, great option. You know? um, as you get into winter, again, that's where you're, wanna get, you're going to want to get into um, possibly a rain shell. Um, again, this is our soft shell with a little bit more, um, a little bit more fleece, like as you work your way up. Really the, think about it overall this way. <clears throat> when you are layering in general, um, you kind of just think about it as like, okay, I have my base layer, I have my mid layer, and I have my outer layer. <clears throat> From a base layer perspective, this is the biggest secret that might be unknown. I think more people are figuring it out. Ba getting a good base layer is so huge. And what you want base layer to do is hug your body. And it basically is that first layer of warmth. This base layer, if I was to plug anything from Climb, which I've already done too much of, the 3.0 base layer from Climb, there's 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and it gets warmer as you go up. This is an old model. How cool is the, like, Camel on this. Yeah, I like it. Um, oh, here, look inside too. Like this waffled, this waffle texture. It's like a micro fleecy. Yeah, micro fleecy. Listen, uh, there's a ton of awesome base layers, right? The 3.0 is so thick, I just love this stuff. So, but get a base layer. Get something that hugs you. You know, Eric wanted me to do a take where I like jumped and we transitioned and I was only wearing spandex yeah. and I, <laughs> I want, <laughs> that didn't happen. Okay, uh, so get a good base layer. The mid layer is the next one. In that layer, you want to be breathable and be somewhat fitting, but somewhat loose. Um, having a wool or synthetic or really just a non-cotton mid layer is very key. Um, cotton, once wet or once sweated on, really doesn't lose, it's, it takes a long time to dry. Um, even like, I think this shirt's like 50-50, like some cotton, some not. Still, I wouldn't even probably go for this. I would want like a fleece or something synthetic, just something in the middle, which like would kind of have, it wouldn't be this jacket, but it would have like this material, just like a light fleece, right? 
there's tons of fleeces, mm -hmm. a good fleece. And then the outer layer is your protection from the elements. So that's where you're going for like this traverse jacket. Awesome wind protection. Gore-Tex is a really good option on any company, right? Um, Rainproof, that's really the main thing. Have a good, good base layer, have a great mid layer, have a good outer layer, and then as the day's temperature changes from morning to night, hot during the day, you can take things off, put things back on as you need them. Throw them in a box in the back, put them in a backpack that's secured, whatever. And again, summertime, literally get the lightest thing possible. All right, footwear. And guess what? We're gonna come up here. Uh, yeah. Eric's gonna keep standing. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> um, we're talking footwear, right? And what we always say with footwear is get over the ankle covered, ankle, over the ankle boots. Why do we recommend this? Because the toes are protected with the closed toe, right? There's a little bit of reinforcement. It's giving your ankle support. It's just protecting your ankle. You don't want to get hurt out on the trail. Um, or when you're not even in the vehicle, you're hiking, right? Um, now, I've joked about this, right? I've said, don't wear flip-flops. Guess what? <laughs> I don't hate flip-flops. <laughs> I have Birkenstocks at home, Chacos at home. Like, I don't hate flip-flops, but... Do you, wait, 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 do you wear socks with your Birkenstocks? <laughs> I bet you do. You promised you weren't going to expose me. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. Flip-flops are awesome. Uh, guess what? If you're going to go, like, I know a ton of people take their machines, grab the family, and they go to the lake, or they go to, uh, you know, a pond or some body of water, maybe mudding, who knows. Um, put your flip-flops in a backpack, bust them out when you get there, it'll feel good to take, you know, your riding boots off. Also, you're, you don't want to ruin your flip-flops, you don't want to hike in your flip-flops, like, just, just hang in there, okay? Protect your feet, protecting your feet is cool. Um, but this is really what, like, I would recommend, an over-the-ankle boot, it doesn't mean you need to have some big, clomping, hiking boot, crazy, tactical boot, like, a light hiking boot that is over your ankle. This is all the protection you need. It's super light, like again, kind of like the carbon helmet. Super light, nothing crazy. Has awesome protection uh, for the bottom, um, great lugs. Like, kind of think about the conditions you're gonna be in. If you're going to go straight up mudding, um, you might wanna have waders, or you might wanna have like a real deal rain mud boot. Um, if you're going out in the desert or the rocks, well, if you're gonna walk around in the desert, you probably want something that you can actually walk around in the desert in. If you're going to the water, you know what? Bring your flip-flops, but put them in the backpack, put them in a box, you know, back here, we'll talk about that later. Let what you're doing dictate what the footwear is going to be. Okay, last thing, uh, just a couple environmental considerations, like where you're riding, and we're pretty close to the end of the video, Eric, but hang in there, we're, we got some more good stuff still. Last considerations that are a little bit more environmental. Um, if you are riding in the desert where there's dust and like if it's not a windy day, you're like, you're like in the dust. If, you've, if you know, you know what I'm talking about. And you have to ride way back from the car behind you. If you had a modular helmet, there are systems called like clean air systems or something related to air, Dep you know, depends, there's a bunch of companies um, where there's like tubes hooked up to a reticle out of your helmet. It's an air pump behind you and it's sucking, or sorry, it's, is it blowing air in, Eric? It's, I forget, off the, listen, try to do a YouTube video where you're talking for like 20 minutes. The air is going one of the directions, but the point is it's like literally pressurizing your helmet so that air can't get in. And then usually there's like kind of a, almost like a neck gaiter like below that just basically seals off your whole head. You could be plowing through dust, and which I don't recommend still because you need to see. Um, but it just protects your whole face and lungs from you know eating dust all day long. Um, an option if you don't have that, uh, which by the way, it's like, it's the way. It's so great. <laughs> um, so if you want to do that, for sure do it. Uh, if you want to ride an open helmet still, open face, um, again, you want the goggles, and then I would still put a breath box, which is designed for winter, but helps cover your mouth. Um, or if you've seen those like gaiters or like things you can like pull over your head, uh, you know, your, your neck, like I don't have a gaiter on, but they like, right? And then the gaiters come straight down and it just protects your whole mouth from what I call silt mouth. Like, I've gone on some rides where I'm like, oh, I don't wanna wear one, it's annoying. 
I'm gonna be the cool guy. Guess what, when your mouth is totally caked with silt and it's stuck in your teeth and it's crunching for like the next 48 hours, it's not fun. It's probably not good for your lungs, I'm not a doctor, but that's a good recommendation. Get something over your mouth, protect yourself from the dust. Okay, mudding, we already kind of talked about it. Uh, I'm not wearing waders, but um, when you go mudding, Mud is all up in the cab, like it's filling the vehicle again, the floor drains, right? So you are amongst the mud, you're like a mud creature. Um, you want to wear waders because it, uh, it just guaranteed you're throwing away pants if like you go mudding in pants. I mean, if, you're, if you have your special mudding pants, whatever, I don't know, <laughs> do people have special mudding pants? <laughs> Yeah, the, get the linens in the mud. Uh, wear waders, right, they have awesome boots. Um, even if it doesn't get in the, your vehicle, you're like, hey, that doesn't happen, you still have to get out in the mud. You still are doing things in the mud. They come all the way up to here or here somewhere um, and then wear a shirt that you just don't care about. That is all of the pro tips that we have for today. Listen. If we forgot something, if you have a pro tip about any of the things we talked about, if we literally just totally forgot an item, put it in the comments, um, you know, go down there. If you disagree with what I said, let me know, give me your opinion. Do you like your visor down all the time? Let us know in the comments. Um, and again, guess what? Eric has told me I have forgotten every time so far to plug our own channel, which, <laughs> listen, I don't even know if we deserve this yet, uh, but like, comment, subscribe, right? Helps the videos out. If you want to see more videos like this from Polaris, um, again, this, Eric and I, this isn't like our full-time job, you know? So let us know if you're liking the videos. If you like it, click the like button. It's not that hard. If you want to subscribe, you want to see more videos, hit the subscribe button. Let us know. Um, last thing, <clears throat> all this stuff, listen, I love gear, right? I proclaimed at the beginning, I love gear. All this stuff is super cool, right? Halo Master Chief. <laughs> it's not cool though if it sits getting dusty in your garage, if all your jackets are just getting dusty in the closet, please go ride. If that's the only thing you take away, go ride, don't buy any gear, use the gear you have, just go ride, I beg of you. Um, last thing for you guys, hey, Thanks for hanging out today. We will see you next time. Oh, and one more thing, go on a ride this week. See ya. <laughs>